Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. I'm so happy to be here today participating in the Mercy Tierra 27 Day Challenge Fall Inspiration YouTube Hop. I'm going to be giving you step-by-step -step instructions on this layout inspired by the Christina Davidson sketch you see on the screen. It's one of many challenges taking place now on Mercy Tierra's Facebook group, and you have until November 29th to participate. And I'll talk more about the challenges later on in this video. If you don't know this Facebook group, check them out. It's amazing, and I'll put the name of the group in the information box below. So this is what I'm starting with today, which is basically a pile of scraps. They're leftovers from a stash kit I put together at the beginning of the month, but I was lacking decoration. So what I did was I went through my tools and I pulled punches, die stamps, anything to support my theme, which is going to be gardening. And so I will be making my decorations in this video. I did some preparation in advance, having a look at the sketch here, and I made this frame style foundation with three pieces of paper, and I gutted two of them. I cut out those three circles with a scrap of paper, and I also trimmed my photos and matted them. I matted them with the paper that I gutted from behind the foundation page, and the same thing for that large green photo mat. That came from my foundation page too. Um, I need a long border that's going to go towards the bottom of the page. So what I'm doing is taking this six by six piece of paper and I'm cutting it in half and I'm going to adhere the two pieces together. I've been working a lot with six by six paper this month because there was a six by six paper pad in my stash kit. And what you see me doing here, I've been doing a lot. I'm basically taking these two pieces of paper and fusing them together, and I'm doing it with two adhesives. I hold the two pieces together with my regular adhesive, but then I put this tear tape behind it, and I feel like it almost mends the two pieces together. So I'm going to flip over the paper, and I trim it up all nice and neat and tidy. So this will measure two and three quarter inches wide by ten and three quarter inches long. And once I do that, I find that once the layout is put together, I really don't see the seam where the two pieces are adhered together. Like I said, I've been doing it a lot. This paper almost doesn't count because it's this real blocky print, but I've been doing it with a lot of other um, pieces, a lot of other 6x6 six six paper, and even when the prints are not as easy to put together, it really does work well. Anyway, that's just a little... Uh, a little tip if you're working with six by six paper pads. What you see me doing here is placing all the main page parts on the foundation page. So that's that green photo mat, the border, the two photos, and the three circles. Now what I'm going to do is adhere all of these to the page, but I have an adhesive that permits me to move things around a little bit before it becomes permanent. And I will be adding embellishments in and around these photos. So if your adhesive becomes permanent immediately, I would recommend you hold off on adhering the photos at this point. But before I start decorating and while I'm adhering, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this YouTube hop. So there are a whole bunch of crafty YouTubers out there today participating, and all their links are in the comments below. What we're doing is each one of us is taking one of the challenges from Mercy Tierra's Facebook group and we're doing them on YouTube, hopefully to offer people inspiration and motivate people to actually participate. There are prizes associated with these challenges and actually today there's a bonus challenge, so a bonus prize. And the details for that bonus challenge are also in the information box below, so I recommend you read that. But basically it goes something like this. If you scrap lift one of the YouTubers today, um, you can enter your project in two challenges. You can enter it in the bonus challenge, but you can also enter it into the original challenge. However, there is a little twist there. There are a few little extra elements you have to add just to make it fun. So that's why I recommend you 
uh, read the information below. What you see me doing now is creating a title. So I used those stamps that you saw on the screen and I did it off screen. And what I'm doing now is punching them out with a one inch circle punch. And that is a stamp set I bought at a yard sale at a crop for $2 and I never used it. It's a close to my heart stamp set. I totally love it. There are these little polka dots on it. Super, super cute. And um, anyway, yeah, I just wanted to say I put them in my stash kit just to motivate me to use it. And I'm so glad I did. Now what I'm going to do is create tomatoes, but I'm going to create tomatoes with this apple stamp. It's an apple or a pumpkin stamp. It's called Hello Harvest, something like that. It's a new bundle by Stampin' Up, but I need tomatoes because in my garden there were no apples or pumpkins. So if you look on the screen, I want you to see what I'm doing to create these um, tomatoes. Basically, I do the apple, but I'm going to punch out a star with this old Creative Memories punch, and I'm going to place it on the apple but if you do it a little bit offside, it ends up looking like a tomato and you'll see it a little bit better later on in this video. So I punched out a bunch of leaves. Basically what I'm doing here is making a whole bunch of decorations. Now I need a place for my journaling. So what I'm going to do is take my Big Shot and I'm going to cut out some labels and that's a chalkboard paper that is very very old in my stash and I cut out a few of those so that will also be part of my embellishment clusters and for my journaling. So now I have a whole bunch of decorations so I basically did them all here except there were two things I did off screen and that you're gonna see there is a watering can as well as these wooden garden stakes. That's what I'm placing on the page right now. Those two, I also cut out with my Big Shot from tools that I found in my stash, but I did that off camera. So now what I'm doing is creating three embellishment clusters. And the main one is gonna be what you see me doing now towards the bottom of the page. So you have a good look at that tomato. It really does look like a tomato when you put a star on it. It's a trick that I learned from Creative Memories probably 15 years ago. So I'm creating this embellishment cluster. I'm adding some foam adhesive to some parts of this. And I'm creating this the way I always do. I usually start with my larger pieces, which are those tomatoes there. And then I finish off with smaller pieces. So I'm gonna finish off by adding some leaves in and around the clusters. I forgot about my uh, journaling spot, so I'm gonna tuck that in behind the tomato there and I will do my journaling off screen. Now I'm working on the cluster in the top left hand corner. This one's going to be a little bit less elaborate than what I did at the bottom. Again I made a tomato. I'm just going to add a few leaves in and around there. And when I do the cluster on the right side of the photo I'm going to start by placing my title because I've that all has to work together. So here I take the letters that I punched out in advance and they already have the foam adhesive on it and I'm placing them more or less where it says to on the sketch. And now I know where I have room to add a little small embellishment cluster on that right side. I'm gonna talk a little bit about these stamps here because stamp letters are not something I gravitate towards. I think they're very useful. It's always good to have letter stamps in your stash, but I don't like stamping them directly to my page. I like things straight, number one, so I would have to get a stamp positioner and it would just take me a long time. Even when they're clear, it's not always easy to get them perfectly straight. Actually, it's not that bad, but for me, it, for whatever reason, I'm just not inspired to do it. But I find that when I can stamp on cardstock anywhere I want and then punch them out, I'm much more inclined to use them. It also adds a whole different decorative element to the page. So I'm really happy, like I said before, that I threw in these stamps in my stash kit this month because otherwise I probably never would have used them. Now what you see me doing is looking for a third hit of red on this page. I didn't want to add another giant tomato. There is a coordinating page for this particular layout and there are tomatoes on that as well. So what I did was I 
got out my heart punch, my red heart punch, which is always on my desk. And I cut out a few red hearts, but I'm not quite sure where I'm going to place them. I also felt I needed something in the top right hand corner, even though there is nothing on the sketch. For some reason, it looked empty to me. So I took one of those chalkboard labels that I made and I cut it in half and I'm just going to stick it up there now. But what remains to be seen is where I will place all my tiny little elements. And I tend to take a lot of time making decisions for this. So what you see me doing is fooling around with these little red hearts. Like I said, I want a third hit of red somewhere on the page. I also want to put the date somewhere because the date is important. This is a story about my garden seven weeks after it was planted. And the other page I spoke about earlier, that is on day one. So this is seven days later. So I do want to add the date. I want to add another hit of red, those red hearts somewhere. And I also end up pulling out, you'll see that in a minute, um, a brad that was in my stash kit as well. This is a date stamp by uh, One Canoe Two from the Saturday Afternoon Collection and I absolutely love it. Uh, so that's what you see me stamping there. And just another thing, you saw that purple cloth, that mauve cloth that I was washing my stamp on. I don't know if you have that, but it's kind of new to me. It's basically a chamois and I bought mine at uh, Stampin' Up! and I absolutely love it. You just wet it and it stays wet for a few days to be perfectly honest and you wipe your stamp with it. I've been saving a lot of money on stamp cleaner just by buying that cloth. Anyway, back to my layout. So there I have it, my brad that I'm got out and I'm fooling around with all the little pieces and I end up turning off the camera because I end up spending, I don't know, about 10 minutes on these three tiny elements just trying to decide where to place them. I finally did and this is what I ended up with. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Scrapbooking Quebec if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to check out all the other crafty YouTubers who are participating in this YouTube hop. Links to their channels are all below in the information box. And also, don't forget you have until November 29th to participate in the Mercy Tierra 27 day challenge fall challenge so please participate anyway thank you so much for watching and have a great day